Welcome back to The Ed Show and the battleground story tonight, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie's assault on our nation's teachers. Now, I figured while we're focusing on education, I'd do my part and expose this guy as public enemy number one when it comes to schools. He slashed public education funding by more than $800 million while he gave tax cuts to millionaires in New Jersey. And when he's not hollering at voters at a Meg Whitman rally in California, he's going after teachers and their unions back in Jersey. It's all part of the Republican attack on labor, isn't it? And our children will be worse off for it. Uh, where is the moral compass when it comes to educating our young people in this country? This is the critical question. Is it all about a dollar or is it about performance and making things work in America? Joining me now is Dennis Van Roekel, the president of the National Education Association. Mr. Van Roekel, good to have you with us tonight. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. What, what is your response to some of the radical things that have taken place in education, how education is now becoming a political target as it was in New Jersey? You know, it's sad to me. I grew up in a small town in Iowa and my parents, my community members, and my teachers all told me that whatever dream I had, education was the way I could get there. I was lucky. I got to live my dream. I was a high school math teacher for 23 years. And it just seems sad to me that right now, for political expediency, we somehow want to shut that off. Well, in New Jersey, they have one of the great systems in America. Pride in public education. Why cut it? Well, how am I supposed, or anybody else watching tonight, uh, supposed to believe that they just happen to have 6,000 incompetent teachers and they all had to be cut? It's all about the money, isn't it? Yeah, you know. It, What's not understood is when you eliminate 6,000 adults who work in those schools, there's not one less student coming to school, which means higher class sizes, which means elimination of some of the programs, which means special services for students that are no longer provided. To me, we ought to invest in education. It's a simple principle. Investment in education pays every single time, and that should be the last place we try and cut money is not the first. This is the President of the United States today talking about hiring 10,000 more teachers. Here it is. My administration uh, is announcing that we are going to specifically focus on training 10,000 new math and science teachers. We've got to boost performance in that area. We used to rank at the top. We are now 21st in uh, science, 25th in math. What about that, Mr. Van Roekel? Well, I agree with the president. We need to really focus on recruiting a whole new generation of teachers. We know in the next 10 years, so many of our teachers are going to be retiring, and we need to replace them. And in terms of STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math, we have a real need. I think building that interest in math and science and technology begins in the elementary schools. Our elementary teachers play such an important role of building the interest in mathematics. And of course, then following high school, we have to keep them in those fields and encourage them to go into teaching. The, the teachers' union has been vilified quite a bit in this country. Make the case, why should a teacher join a union? You know, my first year of teaching, I honestly believed that if I worked hard enough and I cared enough about each of my students, I could deliver what they needed. But the reality comes that while I'm teaching in the classroom, there are every single decision is made by a policymaker outside of education. My involvement, my membership in the organization was my way of getting my voice into that mix. If you're going to make policy about what's best for students, please include my voice as a teacher because I'm with them every single day. So for me, the association is necessary. Well, in Time Magazine poll shows that 67% of the American people think that public schools are in crisis. Do you agree with that number? I think the world has changed dramatically in the last 50 years, and we have to reassess what we want public education to accomplish. What's its purpose in the 21st century? 50 years ago, there were jobs in agriculture and manufacturing, and some of the students didn't need that career and college readiness because they were career ready as soon as they even dropped out of school. Are, That's not true today. Are school vouchers a threat to public education, in your opinion? I think the biggest threat to public education is the debate that says that somehow it's not important. Okay. We have to understand as a nation that the bedrock, the future, is dependent on a strong, vibrant public education system. Every student ought to have a great public school no matter where they live, no matter who they are. This is the president again today talking and addressing the dropout rates. Here it is. You, you can't defend a status quo in which uh, a third of our kids are dropping out. You can't defend a status quo when you've got 2,000 schools across the country that are dropout factories, and they really are, where more than half of the kids are dropping out. In those, in, in those schools, you've got to have radical change. 
What kind of radical change would you suggest or go along with to turn those numbers around, Mr. Van Ruckel? Well, I totally agree with the president that the status quo is not acceptable. And I think what we're doing as a union, the school improvement grants, which are aimed and targeted to schools that are underperforming, the ones that President Obama was talking about. Every single one of those schools that receive funds, we're going to include in what we call our priority schools campaign. We don't call them high need schools. We believe they ought to be high priority. We're gonna part with them and say to them, get management, get the school board and the employees in their union at the table, reach out to parents in the community and let's decide together, what are we going to do differently to ensure that our our students but have a is, bright future. But is that dropout rate a resource issue, quickly? Absolutely. We have to come up with new ideas and new programs to meet their needs, because currently we are not. Mr. Van Roekel, good to have you with us tonight. Thank Thanks you, so sir. much. Now let's get some rapid-fire response from our panel on these stories.